Hi guys, welcome to Learning Electronics Repair and Debt and myself today. So we've got some interesting things to talk about. Hey nerds. Yep, nerds, welcome. So this video is sponsored by PCBWay.com and today we're going to order some PCBs for some upcoming projects or rather maybe just some things to play around with. One of these <laughs> I think is going to be very controversial. So we know you guys like controversy, especially in the comments down there. So, Det, tell everybody what this is and why it may be controversial. Okay. Uh, you know, guys, we are always sitting around and talking about, oh, did you see this chip? And uh, yeah, we were running into two really interesting little chips uh, the last week. So and we thought, okay, this is something to play around. We don't have a real project for that, but sometimes you need to make just a prototype to find out does this work the way we want it mm. and um, yes this is what we did <laughs> and this one I believe did you find this just looking for the date sheet or did you find this from somebody else's video a rather well-known youtuber I have to confess sometimes I watch Big, Big Clive <laughs> okay okay so what did Big Clive have that we thought might be interesting yeah this wasn't something particularly interesting you know this was a infrared switch thingamajig uh-huh so uh, just an infrared diode that you that is a wall switch, and um, this is all not so much interesting. But what I thought was very interesting was the power supply. Okay. And uh, this is a power supply without a transformer. Uh huh. So is this power supply connected directly to the mains? There's the downside. It is. Ah, oh, yeah. told you guys, controversy. Yeah. So this was used, you say, for an infrared switch. This is something you sort of wave your hand in front yeah, of. Yeah, something like It's that. a plastic yeah. thing, so you can't contact yeah. anything yet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, okay. uh, guys, this is only something to use inside an enclosure where you can't touch the live things on there because you can't guarantee that there's not 230 volts in our case or 110 yeah. in the stays on, uh, the, on the end. Uh, just waiting for your finger. Yeah, this will hurt. Don't. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, guys, chat about that down there. Let's have a look at Big Clive's circuit diagram. I think you made of this. Yeah, I can show you the uh, the schematics of the thing. Okay. And I didn't reinvent the, went the V wheel here because uh, no, because it's already invented. You know. Uh huh. Yeah. And this is how I normally do my uh, things, my uh, my circuits when I when I want to copy something. This is a screenshot from Big Clive's video. Okay. If you want to know where the video is coming from, somewhere down here I knows this based on based on Big Clive's video. Do, 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 uh -huh. So okay. Pause this, pause the video right now and watch this video if you want to have more details here because oh. we, <laughs> yeah, we don't want to do the details. I've just spotted something. So somewhere in the short code here is quite a nice little sequence of matches. <laughs> didn't realize that. That's what we think of uh, mains powered non isolated <laughs> supplies, maybe. That's what YouTube for. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. so what do uh, we have? I needed a screenshot because. I wanted to draw it from there, by the way, there's a link missing down here. Uh -huh. And uh, of course, I wanted to look into the data sheet. This is a screenshot. Um, this is a screen grab from the data sheet and okay. simply slapping this together because data sheet beside that really yeah. helps. What you don't get in the data sheet, you can tell by here, you don't get the values. So you don't know what this resistor is or what this cap is. And since Bit Clive re-engineered the whole thing, there are values here. So okay. I don't need to guess these things. So, Good. of course, standing on the shoulders of giants. Uh huh. Again. I noticed one major difference with Big Clive's. He has just a single rectifier diode in here, uh, half wave rectifying, whereas this actually has a bridge. Yep. Hmm. I went for the bridge. Okay. I can. <laughs> you probably can get away. These things, this was a, these Chinese modules are cost e efficient. So, yeah. A single diode costs less than a full bridge rectifier. Oh, uh, so shall we have a look at the actual schematic next, please? Or as we could say, debt, take it to the bridge. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, there's not so much going on, and you know me, I love my nets everywhere. So this is the central chip here. This is one when we were talking about. This uh -huh. is a BP2525F. Okay. So BP is bright power, and the 2525 is a serial, and F is the highest current type. Okay. This can do up to one amp or something. Oh, okay. Yeah. And the funny thing on this thing is the select pin. The select pin, with the select pin, you can decide if this output five volts or it outputs 3.3 volts. Oh, okay. So yeah. it's switchable between the two. Yeah. We have a voltage select thing on here, which 
again, don't touch when it's live. Okay. Yeah. Um, so we're coming in down here with a little rectifier and excuse the weird drawing here because I needed to switch pins for the connector. And okay. this was easier in the layout then. Mm -hmm. So we're coming in through a br little bridge rectifier. Then I have high volt minus, high volt positive. This goes to the little chip and there's the what you have, whatever you need around the um, whole chip to function. Okay, so we have effectively after the bridge, we have what? The chip and one, two, three, four, six components. Yep. Hmm. And on a PCB, this looks like that. Okay. Again, this is just for testing this out. This isn't the final product we're thinking about. This is just for testing this out and see what's going to happen. Yeah. Also, because we have coming in here, 240 volts AC, we have high voltage around. So we want to spread the tracks out a bit, don't we? We don't want these tracks too close to each other anyway. There are some tracks you can do this. This is this is the, uh, the output side of the chip. Okay. So, uh, with 5 volt and 3.3 volt, I'm fine with having tracks this close. And if you look at the pin, pin spacing here, this is so close. This is yeah. that's quite close. Because there's no voltage difference between those yeah. tracks. Yeah, but uh, I wanted to have some really nice tracks widely separated down here. And this is, by the way, a reason for not having a round ground plane here. Okay. Yeah, if we would go further with a design like that, we probably have a ground plane somewhere, but I would take care of that. So the high voltage side is separate. But again, yeah. guys, if you want to build this, this is all high voltage. So uh, if you have to plug the runway around, this running at 230 volts in, in reference to Earth. This is what yes. saying. In reference to Earth. So don't touch. Yeah. Also, obviously, there's no ground on here. This is not Earthed. So from here, we can power what? A microcontroller or something? A micro? You have one amp, five volt, one amp there. Okay. So you can run a lot of stuff there as long as it's somehow in a enclosure. Enclosure. So yeah. no, nothing you can press buttons and touch really. Yeah. So maybe if you use plastic buttons. Okay. Okay. Maybe. Guys, controversy down there. Down there, please. Okay. So that's the design. Can we look at this in a 3D image? Of course. And there we have it. Yeah. This is how a little PCB will look like. So we have terminal blocks down here. These are the things with the little screws on top. Yeah. Uh, this would be my voltage selector, 5 volt or 3.3. .3. Yeah. Just those jumpers, yeah. yeah. And an output. And an output, yeah. Okay. So if we order these from PCBWay.com, we'll get some of these actually just made. Shouldn't cost very much money. Interesting question for you guys. What would you use one of these for? Can mm -hmm. you think of some use that you would actually use these for? We'd be very interested to know Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Very yeah. interested. Yeah. One thing we're going to do with this PCB we will order this assembled. Because mm -hmm. we don't have a BP twenty five twenty five F lying around. And um I don't have a one of these little inductors, a one milli Henry inductor. Would you have uh -huh. something like that? I you know? probably do have them actually, okay. but yeah. yeah. But this way, we don't have to stock these things. No. And uh, they're probably as cheap as you get them from AliExpress. So, um, and they come assembled. So uh, you don't have to fiddle around with all the SMD things here. Uh -huh. You can't get away without SMD because the BP2525 is only available in this package. Yeah, SMD. I've noticed what happened to the OR3 resistor. It's not on the pads. Oh, um, you mean there's no footprint yes. here? Yes, where's the resistor? <laughs> <laughs> probably choose a simpler resistor here because uh, this will be in the bomb where it says, okay, we need this one. Um, like 0402 or yeah, 0604, whatever it is. Yeah, 805, 0805. Okay. Yeah, because I went for big resistors here. Uh, we have an inrush limiting thing over here with 33 ohms. So this is at 12 or 6, I think. Okay. Um, just for being on the safe side. With, yeah. the, with these big pads, you know, if you need to solder wires to them, you probably can do this with this mm. with this packaging size. If you go smaller or four or two, this would be hard to solder any, any wires yeah, there. Yeah. And remember, we're trying this out now, right now. Yeah. I also guess you could actually replace this with an NTC, and mm -hmm. you can get SMD NTCs True. in the same sort of form factor as a resistor. Yeah. Okay, so guys, that one, uh, controversial or not, love to hear your thoughts on it. Yeah. Do we have a logo on the backside?
Oh, yeah, we have a logo. Oh, we have a logo. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so his important part is on there. Yeah. I've, I've, I've noticed that Detlef hasn't put his name on this, by the way. He's, he's put my name on it. <laughs> <laughs> All controversy in my direction. <laughs> we know if it blows up, it's, it's your yep, fault. it's my fault. <laughs> But we actually have another one. Now, I think this one, I was really, really surprised. I think you guys would be surprised as well. So, Jet, where did this next idea come from? I saw this chip in a YouTube video from another channel, Lefty Maker. That's okay. for me being Lefty too. And okay. um, I can't remember for the life of me in what context it was. But the the chip that was on this stuck with me. And we have a look at the data sheet first, I think, because Rich has the data sheet on the other monitor here. We'll do that right now. Yeah. And this is the data sheet. So this is the AL5809 constant current linear LED driver. So are we going to make LED drivers? Well, it's a constant current source. It doesn't need to be an LED driver. Well, it's designed to be an LED driver. But if you look at the little thing, this looks like a diode, but it only has two pins. Almost, yeah, I know, then cathode with a stripe on it looks exactly like a diode. Yeah. So um, I was, I thought, man, this could could have fooled me because I would normally think, okay, this is probably some diode. The number doesn't give it away. And yeah, this is how you do this. Yeah, so LEDs or anything mm -hmm. else, anything mm -hmm. else you want a constant current source for, mm -hmm. from power into here, yeah, it's, it, it's a diode. It's a diode, yeah, and this thing, obviously simply regulates the internal resistance to have a constant current through the whole thing. Mm. It's all high side as well, so high side or low side, absolutely mm. fine. Yep. But guys, this is not actually a diode. What's mm. inside it is this, so in and out, there's some sort of comparator op amp. Of course, this is driving a MOSFET to give you the constant current source. This is a very typical constant current source circuit. Wow. And it goes up to 80 volts, so, uh, yeah. Yeah, 80 volts, yeah. And it says the maximum wattage, I believe, 1.2 watt. Mm -hmm. And this comes in two packages. So we have a power DI123 package, which I've never seen. And we have the SOD, or SOD, which mm -hmm. I like to call them, 123, which is a very common SMD diode package. Those are just a few millimeters. Mm -hmm. And you probably think, okay, wait, how do we set the current? You figured this out, right? Um, <laughs> no, I asked Detlef. Detlef, how do we set the current? <laughs> okay, uh, scroll up a bit. You buy the right one. You buy the right one. Okay, so, yeah, so you buy the right, so there's various models of this, okay? Mm -hmm. And you just buy the right one for the current that you want. Yeah, so if you want to have a 15 milliamp current source, you buy the 15 milliamp. And if you want to have 60 milliamps, you buy the 60 mil, and so so forth and so on, up to 150 milliamps. Ah, okay. In a power di 123 package, whatever this is. This is not such a common component. I'm interested to see if we can actually get these on AliExpress. Let's go. I found a multi-listing for various diodes, and this suggests 20 pieces or five euro sixty four. There may be cheaper options. I didn't have a very close look around, but there don't seem to be many sellers with these. To be quite honest, I found another seller here. So this is the fifteen milliamp version, a pack of ten for two twenty five. And shipping is reasonable this time. Yeah, and of course <laughs> shipping will vary depending on where you are. True. Yeah. So, Dad, are these a new device? See in the data sheet it says October 20, 2014, So. Oh, that's really old. Is yeah, this 10 is years or more. 10 years on the market right now. Probably not so much used, you know, but I love the idea of having something that small. Yeah. So how are we going to use these? Are we just mm -hmm. going to put one? What are we going to do with the PCB? Okay, let's have a look. I'm reluctant to call the schematics, but, you know, it's just for testing. So uh, I uh, did a little PCB with the 15 milliamps, the 25 mil and the 50 mil okay. versions and uh, comes down to this. Uh huh. So you put some voltage over here, and you simply have the little devices. See, the symbol is just a diode. Yeah, basically. Yeah, and uh, over here you will have 50 mil, 25 mil, or 15 milliamps. And up to 80 volts, was it? Yeah, voltage can go up to 80 volts from the data sheet. Yeah. 
Now, I'm sure there's quite a lot of uses for this guy. So mm -hmm. although it's meant for LEDs, especially for test equipment, there's often cases where you might want a constant current source somewhere in the milliamps range mm -hmm. for testing various things. And this would be ideal. Connect your variable bench power supply to the input of it. And then you can just have some terminals on there. You can connect your test leads to, which give you all the various constant currents. That yeah. I do like. Yeah. Uh, you see different footprints over here. This is because I was a bit of struggling to get the right footprint here. Okay. Since it's just a DI, power DI, one, two, three. Uh -huh. They will all look like diodes. And yeah. That's what looks the yeah. same, yeah. This one, I think, is not controversial then. I can find some definite use for that. And I'm sure actually you guys will probably say there's some good uses for this. So, again, in the comments below. Yeah. This is kind of like a development board you've made here then, really. Yep, test board. It says test board already. Yep. Mm. Yeah. So this is something we simply will play around with. And uh, sometimes you need to know these kinds of things like exist to have a, maybe you have a problem where you think, okay, I need a constant current source with 25 milliamp. And um, now I have to build something. Yeah. Da, 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 da. And that's Not the anymore. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So guys, that's the first time we've really particularly done this type of video where we're looking at new devices that are available or things we just haven't seen before, even if they're not exactly new. And looking at what we can do with them, you know, testing these things out. So maybe you guys have some ideas for future videos, strange devices or things you might like to see tested in this way. Yeah, shall we get these guys to let us know, yeah? Yeah, please do. Yeah, strange devices are always welcome because, you know, this isn't so far-fetched and the power, power supply isn't such a bad idea, you know, because you can get away without a big transformer or something. And um, you're coming right out with five volts. So yeah. you could do something with Wi-Fi, you know, as a support for, for Wi-Fi capable okay. CPU. True, true. Yeah. Okay, so I would like to say thank you to PCBWay.com. They sponsor these videos, guys. That allows us to build these things. So we get sent the PCBs we ordered. We're getting these for free as part of the sponsorship deal. So that is a big thanks to PCBWay. And thanks to you guys for watching. And thanks in advance for commenting below and letting us know what you'd like to see in the future. Right. Okay, that'll do for today. Ciao, Ciao for now, guys. Now.